Education parents. And what I learned from Satyamajumda's talk is that I have to write really big for this course. And this will be both classical and quantal. Uh, the work is uh, done in collaboration with uh, Girish Agarwal, myself. The classical part appeared in uh, Fizrev E, November 2015, and the quantal part uh, is being, has been just submitted. I'm not going to give a, a review of the whole subject, uh, but just to focus on what we have done. And uh, our basic premise is a system plus a bath approach, where you think of a system of interest, and then you couple it to a large heat bath, which is at a fixed temperature T, and so the bath is taken to be in thermal equilibrium, and the system and the bath coupling is, let's say, assumed to be switched down at time T equal to zero. So the system is in, not initially in equilibrium, but is expected to go to equilibrium with the bath at the temperature capital T eventually. But it's a non-equilibrium driven system, so you apply an external force onto the system. Now in this context, uh, that is the fluctuation theorem and the classical one, uh, what we will focus on is a statement due to Galavert, T, and Cohen. Who said that if you define a work operator, the dynamical variable, which I will do momentarily, then the probability distribution of that variable W, P of W over P minus W, in the Galavoti Cohen expression has this remarkable result that it's W over the Boltzmann temperature. So uh, we're going to question this. Uh, and in fact, I'll tell you the results. We find in our studies that indeed P of W over P of minus W has the structure of something like P to the alpha W, but alpha is not universal. It's not one over KT always, and we'll try to find conditions under which alpha does indeed become one over KT. So, uh, so the context in which we will study the problem is you start out with a multivariable, multidimensional Gauss Markov process. Which can be described by uh, Langevin equations, at the moment classic. So as you all know, can write down this multidimensional Langevin equation, Langevin equations as the time derivative of the ith component of the velocity vector, which will have a systematic component, AIGs are tensors, and then you have Bij, Vj, which could include uh, frictional damping terms. Then you, of course, have a noise, it's usually delta correlated white noise for classical Langevin equation. Then you have the external force Fi of t. And what you want to calculate in the context of Galavati Cohen relationship is the work operator W, which you define as summation J. Uh, integral zero to time t d tau, 
a force f of tau dot product with a velocity vector. So you want to know the full distribution of v of t, the full dynamics of v of t, to be able to calculate the full dynamics of w and its probability distribution. So what you find is that, let me just, not necessarily because uh, we'll also go to the quantum domain where we want to look at very short time behavior of uh, mean w and mean w squared. The sum is over. Galavuti coin is for large type. Yes, yes. So Galavuti coin is for large time, and we will rec rec will recover Galavuti coin also in the last time description. Right. So uh, you know, in order to calculate the probability distribution, it is usual to calculate what is called a characteristic function. Madam Chairperson, uh, how am I doing with time? Okay. Twh, which is defined as e to the hw. Now, because this is a Gaussian process, simple, right? Uh, you know, you can calculate this as e to the h, the first moment of w, and this term is simply half h squared sigma squared. And in, in particular, the P of W is 1 over 2 pi sigma exponential minus W, W mean squared over 2 sigma squared. And so therefore, you actually have this relationship where alpha will turn out to be equal to two times the mean w over sigma squared, the variance. The sigma square is a variance. Okay, so, uh, so what we find is that the Galavuti, uh, in the long time limit, the Galavuti coin relationship holes and alpha will become one over kt only if and only if you apply the force, the force acts only on one variable. So GC, GC holds and alpha is one over kt in t going to infinity limit if and or the force acting only on one variable and uh, everything is isotropic like if I have a multi-dimensional process then diffusion has to be isotropic the mass has to be isotropic you might want to imagine the mass to be a tensor in the context of solid state physics so uh, diffusion i.e. friction mass are all isotropic. If they are not, then actually you don't have, uh, you have more complicated expressions for alpha uh, uh, in, the, in this expression of P of W. So at this stage, our work was motivated also by experiments carried out in Indian Institute of Science in the group of Professor Ajay Sood. Well, uh, it's not a question of independent, but suppose I have multidimensional. Yeah, right, it doesn't hold. It doesn't hold. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ajay Sud and his students and collaborators looked at, I think Shiva Ramaswamy was also involved at the beginning. Uh, it, the tapered rod, which undergoes Brownian, uh, which undergoes motion in the con, in the in the sea, uh, heat bath of 
spherical beads, and they found violations of uh, this relationship. And uh, they, in fact, discussed what are called isometric fluctuation theorems, uh, which so our results confirm that, in fact, you have to go beyond the Galavo T coin for multidimensional cases. Now, uh, next in the next part, what we want to discuss is the generalization of these results to the quantum domain. And so to be very specific, what we consider to be a system is an electron put in a magnetic field. So, uh, and actually we also looked at explicit results in the classical case uh, as well for this problem of what we call dissipative cyclotron motion. Yes. Yes. So you have you put an electron in a magnetic field B, let's say applied along the z-axis. And as you know, because of the Lorentz force, they go in a cyclotron orbit. And now uh, we want to study this problem both classically and quantum mechanically. In, in particular, we will now focus into the quantum case for the next few minutes. So uh, as you know, for this problem also, you have to write, actually write down an exact quantum Langevin equation, which is necessarily two-dimensional uh, in the xy plane. So you have the vector omega c. The omega c is the cyclotron frequency, which is eb over mc. minus zero to t d, dt prime. Friction is a memory kernel. It turns out that you, in order to calculate uh, the w, the work operator now, where velocity is now an operator, which does not commute with itself at different times, you actually have to undo the Langevin equation and uh, go back to an underlying Hamiltonian from which you can derive this quantum Langevin equation exactly. And that Hamiltonian is very well known now. By now it's called the Caldera Leggett Hamiltonian. This is the minimal coupling term, the kinetic energy of the electron in a magnetic field defined by the vector potential A. And you have a linear coupling with a bunch of harmonic oscillators. So you have the kinetic energy for the harmonic oscillators. And this is the coupling term. Pj, Qj over Mj omega j squared squared. So when you complete the square, you get a linear coupling between Q and Qj, uh, Q being the coordinate of the particle of interest, in this case, the electron, and P is this canonical momentum. All right. So uh, now using this equation, you can actually derive this where it turns out that you have an explicit form for the friction gamma, which is C square over Mj omega j sine omega dt. So that is your damping, the friction. And the noise is a now a quantum operator. So I'm finishing 15 minutes or 12 minutes? Finishing 15 minutes. Oh. So it's 40 seconds. OK. Good. So eta of t is summation j, pj, uj of naught. So you, you, know, uh, you, you know everything in terms of the initial values. Cj q of naught over mj omega j plus Cj uh, 
So I'll just uh, tell you the results now. I'm actually done. Sorry, the, uh, this is what I missed. So the cosine omega j t plus p j of naught. Sine omega j. So you, you therefore the noise is written explicitly in terms of the bath operators at time t equal to zero, and they go in in order to because you have to solve the equation for the velocity by writing the equations of motion from the Hamiltonian. You plug that back into the W, and then you calculate the characteristic function. So what are the results? In fact, results are not obtainable in closed form except if you invoke what is called an ohmic dissipation, where the bath spectral function is assumed to be such that the friction becomes a constant friction. And in which case, you still have a rather complicated expression, but then you apply what is called a rotating wave approximation in quantum optics, where you assume that omega c is a very large frequency. Now this is, uh, quite physical in the context of things like quantum Hall effect because, as you know, when you apply a magnetic field, you get this Landau levels, and the Landau levels are separated by precisely this h bar times the cyclotron frequency, and quantum Hall effect regime is the one in which lowest Landau levels are occupied in which omega c is actually very, very large. So omega c is taken to be the largest frequency, larger than the damping, and in that case, AT gets replaced by h bar omega c cotangent hyperbolic half h bar beta omega c in the quantum case. So the Galabuti Cohen relation uh, of the kind that is given there, a similar relation holds in the limit of, at the asymptotic limit of time going to infinity, except that AT is replaced by this. So actually, you can also go down to very low temperature, where this term becomes unity, and uh, the thermal energy gets replaced, as you would imagine, by the zero point energy. Time is up, Sushant. Right, right, right. I'm done. Okay. Uh, time for a really quick question. And we Succession theorem is usually for the to entropy production, and uh, that's also in the steady state, right? So usually, I mean, if you look at work or any other quantities, I mean, you don't, I mean, sometimes it holds, but in general, you don't expect it to be a whole in general, right? Possible, uh, but you can show that if you're, you're, if you're dealing with a one-dimensional. No, that's because there's no one dimension when you turn, there's no, see the difference between the work and the entropy production is that uh, that first time on your right-hand side times the velocities. Yeah. And that's a quadratic term in, your variables. So that actually changes the result. No, no, it does not. I'm saying that if you have the, the, the ordinary Brownian motion problem, even if you have a harmonic oscillator, Chanto, stuff, watch out. you have. Is, is this what you do to the speaker? <laughs> and so this is a constant friction gamma v. Yeah. In that case, the Galavutic, well, call it what you may. The way I have described it for the work operator, P, w, P of W over P of minus W goes like it to W over K. I can prove that. Yeah, no, but the question is, it's not general. I mean, that's not a theorem for work, but for the entropy production, that's a theorem. That's a, that's, that's a point I'm making. No, I don't know if I need to <laughs> I'm more comfortable with work which I can calculate explicitly. Perhaps. Okay, maybe I can just, uh, in thermodynamics, you have a relationship. The first law of thermodynamics relates the work to the entropy. All right. Let's thank the speaker for the talk and invite uh, Dr. Kedar for the next.